اعزبلہم شیطان رجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم والحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام علام اللہ نبی آباد سیدنا و نبینا و حبیبنا و مولانا محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم و علیہ و صحابہ و من اتدا بهداه الى يوم الدين اما بعد مدير برنامج سنسس الاسلام السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ تعالی و برکاتہ Welcome to the house of Dua and welcome to another blessed day of Jumu'ah in the year 1445 after the Hijra of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Welcome to the channel from which you learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about his creation, about his message, about his messenger, and of course, about his chosen religion known as Al-Islam. And welcome to the channel from which you learn how to live and be happy in the world we live today and how to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for even greater happiness and success. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, the month of Ramadan, 1445, after the Hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, is gone, and it's gone forever. The moon of Ramadan, 1445, was a creature of Allah. And like every creature of Allah, like you and I, it had a term limit. That term is over. Gone and never to repeat itself again. Same way that when your term is over and death comes, you never come back to dunya again. Same is true of the first day of Shawwal, known as Yamu Uid al Fitri. That day has come and gone. It will never repeat itself. Also a creature of Allah, like you and I. On the day of accountability, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would call us to account. So the moon of Ramadan 1445 after the Hijrah and the first day of Shawwal, known as Eid al-Fitri, will also be called to account. Allah will ask the moon of Ramadan 1445 after the Hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, Did you appear as commanded? It will reply, Yes, my Lord. And did they fast and observe the fast we commanded upon them when you appear? It will testify, for or against you. Same thing with the day of Eid al-Fitr. The first day of Shawwal will be asked, Did you appear before the people? Yes, my Lord. And did they observe the rites that we commanded upon them to observe? Again, that day will testify, for or against you. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, now that the two glorious events are gone, what is left to be done? What is the next thing for us? As we have repeatedly stated in this channel, Islam is the only religion that has a calendar of activities. The end of one activity leads to the other. There's no room for holiday or for rest. In Islam. Now that the moon of Ramadan 1445 after the Hijra is gone and Eid al Fitri has been celebrated, then commences preparations for the Hajj 1445 after the Hijra of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. All those who make intention to perform this year's Hajj, we ask Allah to make it easy for them and to make their Hajj, Hajj and Mabur. My dear brothers and dear sisters, before we come to what is next, There is something important that all of us need to do before it's over. There is no large window of opportunity for it. We've got to do it now and let it go. Or we fail to do it, then of course, we we'll wait for the outcome. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, during the month of Ramadan, we were opportune to cultivate a high level of spirituality. And we did. The Eid al-Fitri was another opportunity provided for us to elevate our spirituality to the highest level. And we did. We ask Allah to forgive our shortcomings in both instances. But before we allow that high level of spirituality we attained in Ramadan and the blessings and joy we had during the celebration of Eid al-Fitri, before we allow anything we gained during the period to be lost, or we allow ourselves to fall down again, 
to the waters of sinfulness. It's important for us to do one thing. Because that's one more time last stated in the Quran. Manja Adele Hassan, Palo Asher, Amsa Aliha, O Manja Abisaya, Pala Yusa, Ela Misla, Wahum, La Yusla. Whoever comes to Allah on the day of accountability with the good he has done, that person will be rewarded ten times or more. And whoever comes with wrong that he has done, Allah will only recompense him with punishment equivalent to that wrong. So Allah will not wrong anybody. It's important for us, therefore, to protect what we have done in the month of Ramadan. One of the ways for us to do it is, soon after we have done it, we got to surrender it to Allah's one. We've got to report it back to him. We've got to report it to him, even though he knows. But it's an act of ibadah for us to tell him what we have done. And the best way to do so is by saying, Rabbana, takbal mina, inaka anta sami uli ali. O oh Allah, our Lord, that Balmina, accept from us. In Naka Anta Semin Alim, for you are the only one who is all hearing and all knowing. You hear everything and all things. You see everything and all things, accept from us. If you want to use it to pray for yourself alone, tell Allah, Rabbana, that Balmini. In Naka Anta Semina, O Lord, my Lord, accept from me, for you are the all hearing and the all knowing. You hear all things and everything, and you know all things and everything. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, this is of tremendous importance. The prophets and messengers of Allah, known as the Ambiya of Allah, they never fail to do this. Whenever they accomplish the assignment given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will always bring Allah into witness. Surrender to him and expect the best from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what is expected of us. The best example of this revealed to us in the Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded Ibrahim we commanded Ibrahim and his son Ismail alayhim salatu wa salam to erect the Kaaba and to purify it. For those who will be coming there for worship, for it the calf, and for the glorification of Allah and to prostrate for Allah's one more time. And they did. And when they completed the assignment, what is the Yara for Ibrahim al Kawai Damin and Beti wa is my Rabbana Takbal me na inaka tasami only ali. Remember that when they completed the assignment of orating the foundation of the Kaaba, they stepped back. Both of them stood up, raised their hand to Allah. Rabbana, O oh our Lord, Takbalmina, accept from us this selfless service. In Naka Anta Semi Ole Alim, for you are the all hearing and the all knowing. This was how Ibrahim alayhi salam submitted his assignment to Allah after his successful completion. Same way we are expected. We will always tell Allah in our worship, in our zakah, in our sadaqah, in our siyam, in our hajj, and any other activity commanded upon us by Allah. After doing it, it's important for you to say, O Allah, save from us, for you are all here and all known. And dear brothers and dear sister, every prophet and messenger of Allah never forgot to link his activity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam also showed us another area of strength. 
Remember, he was thrown into fire because he was preaching the oneness of Allah. And he did not wait to get out of that fire before he declared, Hasbi Allah, Hasbi Allah, Allah is sufficient for me. Allah is sufficient for me as the most reliable pillar. My dear brother, my dear sisters, this is what we are expected to do. And it was not Ibrahim alayhi salam alone that did this. Remember Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam after the battle of Uhud. A report came that the enemies were coming to rout them. And they were advised to seek refuge. They were told to seek refuge. Instead of going to seek refuge, they told themselves, Hasbun Allah wa Niman wa Allah is sufficient for us as our protector. The best pillar for us to rest our hope upon. Allah says, as a result of that, they were protected. The threat of that battle was removed from there and nothing harmed them. My dear brothers, and dear sisters, let's consider the case of Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam. He was marching down on a journey together with his troops of chains, of birds, of men, and of other lower elements of the creation. At the same time, the ant and its babies got out of the ant hill to take fresh air. But the parent ant had the marching of Suleiman alayhi salam and his troops. And the parents advised the baby ants. Maybe who know Master King Nakun. Lay at him and Nakun Suleiman, who was you know, oh, lay a show. Proactively, he warned his babies, Go into the habitation for Suleiman and his troops are coming. They are on top of horses, bigger than you. They will not recognize you, they might march upon you inadvertently. And Suleiman had this. He didn't wait to come down from the horse. He realized this was a favor and mercy from Allah. And he replied, Let be, I was saying, and as could I name Mataka Leti, and after Leya, while I want it, I want a malas, while I hunt her down, while the killing, the Ramatica, the Badica, so I be, oh, my Lord. I was in the Anaskurani Matakalati and Amkale. Enable me, empower me to express gratitude to you. In other words, enable me to thank you for the favor you have done for me and my parents. And admit me into the abode of those who are righteous. Suleiman didn't wait to come down from the top of the horse to do this. To thank Allah, to ask Allah, accept my gratitude. Accept my gratitude. I appreciate your favor upon me. And they were my dear sisters. You know, Saleh Islam was in the belly of the fish as a result of what happened. He was sent to a community of Antioch, today known as Antakia, in the present day Turkey, to deliver the message. But the people were not ready to accept it. They abused him. Out of provocation, he left them, thinking that that would solve the problem. But Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala considered him as having. Abandoned his duty, so he caused the whale to swallow him up in the sea. But he didn't wait to get out of the belly of the whale before he started reaching out to Allah. There's no God but you, Ya Allah. I have wronged myself. Therefore, forgive my sins. Allah says, Pastor Jabuna Allah, we responded immediately. That adversity he was facing, we took it anyway. And we caused the way to drop him at the side of the sea. Guess what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated after that? Fala ola kanet kariyatun amanet fana fana imanu ha ila kauma yunus kama amanu kashafna anihu azaban kizi fin hayati dunia komatana hu ilahi. After Yunus was dropped by the side of the sea and he recovered from the experience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reassigned him, reassigned him to 
the people of Antioch to deliver the message. And when he got there, the entire community accepted the message, full-fledged, 100%. By so doing, Prophet Yunus salam, achieved what no other prophet achieved before him and after him. There was no prophet, no alayhi salam, Hudu alayhi salam, Salih alayhi salam, Shuaib alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, Isa alayhi salam, or even Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi salam, did not achieve what Prophet Yunus achieved by getting acceptance of Allah by the entire people of the communities. That was a win for Prophet Yunus, reminding us that, yes, we can stagger at times, we can make mistakes, but Allah is prepared to give us another opportunity, and once that opportunity is given to you and you accept it and go by it, we will be a victor. May Allah make us victorious over our challenges. And dear brothers, my dear sisters, Let's consider the cases of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam and Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Prophet Nuh alayhi salam was given a boat to escape the punishment of Allah. The punishment that was coming upon his people. But when he sailed down successfully to his place of refuge, he declared, Alhamdulillah, all the praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has saved us from the wrongdoers. Musa alayhi salam had the same experience and made the same dua. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, all this reminds us that after enjoying the favor of Allah, the opportunity given to us by Allah, after rendering a service to Allah, it is important for you to submit that service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank Him. Go back to Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Ibrahim, chapter 14 of the Holy Quran, and see the other follow-up da'wat made by Ibrahim alayhi salam after discharging his duty directing the Kaaba. And what was the outcome of those da'wat? All of them were granted. Now that the month of Ramadan is over, before you allow your spirituality to be destroyed by yourself or by the shaitan, tell Allah, at the end of every of the greatest salawat, or at the best, at the time of your tahajjud, set a time aside where you'll be alone, where you will tell Allah, I have fasted for you in the month of Ramadan. I have observed the Eid al fitr in obedience to your commandment and the soon of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, Ya Allah, Tagbal Mimi, Unaka Anta Sayyid Rahim. If you like, gather your family together and do it together and declare, Rabbana, Tagbal Mimi, Unaka Anta Sayyid Rahim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the epitome of victory after victory. Victory in Makkah. Victory in Medina. Victory at the Battle of Bad, at the Battle of Uhud, at the Battle of Hunain, at the Battle of Tabuk, and other battles. And after his battle, he will thank Allah. On his return from the Battle of Tabuk, the toughest of them all, he never even got to rest in Medina when he declared, Taibuhun, Taibuhun, Abidun, Lerabina, Hamidun, Surakallah, Wada. Najaza wada, Nasara Abda, Ohazaman Azaba wada, Lashe on Kavla, Labada, Yawa you me, for who are high you die, ma. Lay a moon to a lion for to Abada, be a de helicae, for who are la coolinche, Kadi. Those were words of gratitude rendered by the prophet after accomplishment to our last one of water. In respect of the assignment he has done in obedience to the command of Allah. These prophets did all this in obedience to Allah, Allah's commandment upon them. The same way Allah has commanded us to fast for him in the month of Ramadan and to observe the Eid al-Fitri and to do other acts of ibadah. It's important for us at the end of the completion of these acts, we tell Allah, and we go ahead to thank Allah in any way possible for you. If you cannot recite the Quran or the Dawah, then go ahead and use your local language. The famous dua taught to us by the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wasallam, in all these circumstances, he was always telling Allah, in every obligatory salawat, Allah ma'aini, Allah zikrika wa shukrika wa usun ibadatika. Oh Allah, empower me. Empower me into remembering you into being grateful to you. Empower me into rendering the best act of 
devotion to you. Similar to what Prophet Suleiman alayhi salam said. Not different from what Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam said. And Nuh alayhi salam. And Hud and Salim. And Shuaib. And Musa. And Isa. Jesus Christ alayhi salatu wa salam. And the same example we found among the Sahabas of the Prophet. So my dear brothers, my dear sisters, let's remember to thank Allah. Let's remember to do that which is incumbent upon us. Now that the month of Ramadan, 1445, after the Hijrah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the first day of the moon of Shawwal, which is the day of Eid al Fitr, now that they are over, let us ask Allah, O Allah, Rabbana, Takbal Minna, Unaka Anta Semina. We ask Allah to accept our ibadah, take Shaitan away from our lives, and take our lives far away from Shaitan. Again, now that the Ramadan is over, welcome to the resumption of our regular presentations. Yamu Chuma to Yamu Chuma. Friday to Friday. Watch out for these presentations and they will make you a better Muslim. We ask Allah to make us better Muslims. Subhanallah, I'm Dick. Subhanallah, I'm Dick.